translation of the Rosetta Stone. You can't translate hieroglyphics into H, A's, and Z's and stuff like that. Do you sure. know what I mean? Sure. Um, so basically, if you think of this idea of hieroglyphics as talismans, um, power of the stars embedded in this this symbol, um, if you want to call it that, mm. and then everyone assumes that the English language moved on from that, and that our letters just meant letters, just to spell words out, and that there weren't symbols at all. But the fact is that if you look into the idea that the power control in Egypt never died out, and they've been endemic to the power structure from the very start, mm. the letters on the English alphabet are just as much hieroglyphs as the hieroglyphics were, the talismans. I agree, so yeah. Yeah. If you look at the letter A, for instance, you've got a pyramid with a capstone, a capital mm. letter A. Yeah. And then if you look at an S, you've got a snake. And then if you've got like a dollar sign, you've got a snake rising up what could be a Kundalini or, you know, a DNA coil, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. But basically, these, these, these letters have got meanings behind them. And so this main road that cuts through the Olympics 2012 site, which is called the East Cross Road, is also known as the A12 Road. Mm. Now, there's hundreds of A roads in Britain. And so what are the chances that of all the roads that crossed through it were an A12 road, hmm. a Pyramid 12 road? Do, do you see where I'm coming from with <laughs> oh, it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very interesting. It's, um, it's pretty strange that that one road, you know, this is what I'm saying, coincidence is this load of rubbish that this is coincidence. It's not yeah. coincidence whatsoever. No. And then you look into the situation of where it's situated in London and eastern London, and you'll find that it's in two areas. It's separated between Leighton and Leightonstone. Mm. And um, I don't know if you're aware of what a ley line is, but of basically... Of course, yeah. Yeah, if you look into this, the Olympic site is bang on where two lane lines cross over. Hmm. So we're on about something that's connected to the energy grid of, you know, the world, like yeah. the, 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 the lifeblood of the Earth, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, nice. Interestingly enough... Before the, um, the, when we commenced work on the Olympics 2012 site as well, I mean, I got this information off the chap on a message board, but he basically said that they'd organised a massive rave on the Olympic 2012 site, uh -huh. in which um, no doubt there's a lot of government-sponsored drugs out there and a lot of energy being given off. Oh, and yeah. if you think about these energy lines, and they're inviting people to have raves on these sites, alongside holding some of the biggest like competitions in the world ever, mm. think about what's happening with all that energy. Oh, Where yeah, is that course. going? It's, it's probably being fed into the system somewhere. Hmm. Um, and I think that's, that's, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, for instance, as far as UFOs are concerned and stuff like that, if you look into um, UFO sightings and stuff, a lot of them can be attributed to being near ley lines and stuff because obviously um, a UFO isn't necessarily something that's definitely fixed in our particular 3D world, hmm. something that could be obviously of another dimension of sorts. Yeah. Um, but basically, like, you've got this... Zion street map that's fully biblical in every way <laughs> and um, you then decide well I decided to pick up the Bible and um, I don't normally pick up the Bible I'm not that type of person but um, basically picked up and uh, went to the book of Mark and I decided to go to the uh, chapter well chapter 11 verse 11 mm -hmm. you know the old 11 11 yeah we got this uh, we got this passage here then Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple and looked around at everything since it was already late he went out with his 12 disciples to Bethany so we've got a mention of Jesus entering Jerusalem yeah which is obviously Zion's the new Jerusalem mm -hmm. and uh, it says that since it was already late he went out with his 12 disciples to Bethany right next to the Olympics 2012 site down a Roman road is a place called Bethanal Green Right next to the Olympics 2012 site, down a Roman road, is a place called Bethanal Green. Mm. Bethanal <laughs> Green, Bethany, sounds the same, pretty close, you know, not, of not too far off. Yeah. Bethanal Green is 3.3 um, miles, 33, 33rd degrees, Masons and everything, 3.3 miles from Charing Cross, the centre of London. Yeah. So symbolic and, and numerology and everything that goes with it. Of course, and I don't know if you've heard, but uh, if we look at the research of uh, Ralph Ellis, he talks that uh, Mary Magdalene might have been Mary of Bethany. You know, there's a whole connection between right. Beth Bethany and the and the the you know the family of of Jesus, if you will, or you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've, with the whole idea of the um, the Dan Brown bloodline and the Priory of Sion and stuff like that. Yeah. That's um, I mean, I'll get onto that shortly, but that's all part of the plan. That's all part of what's intended here. They wanted to incede the public with the idea that there's a lost bloodline of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Which is, uh, you know, pretty scary. <laughs> to top it off, but on a, on a, uh, on a funny note, um, have you heard of EastEnders before? 
Uh, come again? Say it again. EastEnders, the English soap opera. No, I have not, no. No, right, it's a, it's a popular thing that most of the, I'd say 90% of the population probably watch it, unfortunately. Really? It's a, <laughs> those typical soap operas, and uh, huh. if you watch the intro sequence to that, basically behind the EastEnders logo, where, you know, on this intro sequence, is the Olympics 2012 site. So basically this thing that's making everyone forget about what's going on around them, that's distracting them, providing them with rubbish stories and terrible plot lines and everything, yeah. you know, stopping people from thinking, is symbolically showing this area on the TV screen every night of the week. Mm, interesting. Quite Very weird. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, now I can get on to, I think I've set a, uh, a good standing for this whole idea of uh, Zion and this biblical uh, biblical event of sorts. And you, you know what, What I think we should do like this, Rick. Uh, I think that we yeah. should take a break right here, actually, because this has been uh, basically an hour-long preface here. And, you know, obviously I've got tons of questions and comments, yeah, but I, course, yeah. I, I definitely <laughs> want to just let you kind of lay out what you, you know, what you have here, so to speak, and see where this leads us. So I'm going to ask you, Rick, to just basically continue on, on the trail that you uh, ended in, in our first segment, if you will. Okay. Okay, right. Well, obviously we've um, laid out a ground plan with a street map of uh, you know the Zion Olympics in 2012, like biblical road names left, right, and centre, um, symbology and symbols and everything. You know, it's all over the place. Um, so I sat down and I started thinking to myself. Um, so, what is going to happen? Obviously, this is this is something that's uh, clearly been in the uh, the making for. I mean, I'd presume that those roads have been like named them roads for over a hundred years because uh, the, the street street map hasn't changed in that time mm. um, and so what I uh, started looking into was um, the idea of the Trinity because obviously the pyramid numerology and everything comes gets involved in all of this um, and you know obviously I think there's a there's a lot to be answered for in there and so obviously the procession of the equinoxes is a 26,000 year cycle in which uh, a roughly 26,000 year cycle and mm. uh, takes just over 2,000 years to transition into a new age obviously 26,000 years through 12 signs of the zodiac and that's about 2,100 for a new age mm. and um, obviously in with the dawn of Christianity under Jesus we um, we entered the age of Pisces which was symbolized by a fish um, and prior to that, under the age of uh, Aries, we were symbolically represented with Moses and his ram's horn. Mm, yeah. So you know, and we're, we're we're reportedly moving into the eleventh astrological sign of um, Aquarius, which is the water bearer. And so you start looking into religion for, as a whole, and you realise that every time that there's you know one of these kind of uh, you know transition of the ages, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. Yeah. There's almost like a new Trinity event, which um, which finds itself, you know, radically shaping the landscape. Mm. So, for instance, the the last Trinity event we had essentially was the uh, Jesus, Joseph, and uh, Mary, who had been touched by the angel Gabriel um, Trinity. And obviously, mm. in Christianity as a whole, you've got the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which mm. is symbolic again for the angel Gabriel. Hindu, with Hindu religion, we've got uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Mm. Um, the Jewish Trinity, which essentially not as personified, but was Moses, Ark of the Covenant, and the Temple, mm. and then obviously moving into the human body, we've got the spirit body and soul. You know, we've, we've got it all. But the fundamental Trinity of of the ages, like that started it all, was the Osiris, Isis, and Horus connection. Yeah. Obviously, Osiris and Isis, mother and father, giving birth to Horus, who was uh, essentially the personified, and it was the son. But um, so. Given that we've got this 1776 on the uh, on the um, gold, the, the the Great Seal on the dollar bill, starting at 1776, we've got the um, Latin of Nuvus Ordo Seclorum, and it's literally Latin for New Order of the Ages. Mm. So it's not New World Order; it's what it's New World Order of the Ages. So it's yeah. obviously insinuating that it's to do with the transition of the equinox, like of you know, of the ages moving into the sign of Aquarius. Mm. Um, and so I started thinking to myself, well, you know, if we're moving into this, we're going to have to expect new leaders. We're going to have to expect this new kind of, uh, you know, forefront of religion that's going to come forward and, uh, you know, save the planet as such. <laughs> um, you know, well, that's how they're going to, like, deal with it. Sell, but, us, sell it to us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, are you going to sell it to us? Come <laughs> yeah. on, give us your best shot. <laughs> Basically, um, I started looking towards royalty because, obviously, 
you know, royalty seems to be where it's at in the sense of uh, the, you know, the the coat of arms of Great Britain. Um, it's, it's on there. It's 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 it, but everywhere I look, it always leads me to royalty. It's a bit like you know David Icke and his reptilian kind of stuff. Right. It always kind of leads to this weird weird thing, whatever you want to call it. Mm. And obviously, William is a symbolic person within like the continuation of the royal family and everything mm. but basically i've nothing to go on at first and i just had this real s- small whim and i thought diana is she going to be the uh, personification of isis you know is she going to be the, the next person to be identified with this god mm. and uh thinking it through it's like you know quite probably not but you know let's have a look anyhow may as well mm. have a look mm. and um so basically to just talk about isis a little bit